the end of this, we will be able to explain the need for audits, understand what independence means in the context of an audit, define assurance services, and explain what financial reporting framework is and how it is used, as well as list and define types of attest engagements. All right, so why do we need audits? So why do we need an audit? Basically for trust. Trust is going to be the main service that we're gonna have for the audit. For example, if we think about a company and who they're gonna do business with, they're gonna have transactions with, could be end users. End users like investors. Investors, if you're talking about a publicly traded company, more and more that's gonna be just normal people who are investing and they're putting their money into the company. The company wants those investments, of course. If we talk about banks, we can think about banks in terms of a company possibly could need a loan and they're gonna want the, that transaction. The bank, of course, wants to provide the loan because they're gonna make interest on that. The government, government, the company may not wanna do business, but they have to do business in terms of taxes in some way. And the government, of course, uh, is, is gonna have a need for that as well. So when we, we wanna have these transactions happen, but notice what, what happens often is that what will limit a transaction is if there's no trust. If the investor wants to invest in the company, but they don't know if the company is going to be pro profitable, then the investor doesn't, doesn't know if they're going to put the money in there. If the banks don't think that the company will be able to pay back the loan plus the interest, which is the way they're, why they're giving the loan in the first place, then they're less likely to give the loan. So what can the company do to give more trust? Well, the investors, the bank, the government are going to ask for, of course, financial statements. They're going to say, hey, why don't you give us some financial statements? Tell us what your profitability is. Tell us how you're doing. And then we're more likely to give you uh, what we what we want. We can do business then. The investors can then put in money and invest. The banks can give the loan. The government can uh, process their taxes. And But still, we still might have a problem because the, the investors, the users might be saying, hey, the company has an incentive to maybe not uh, provide financial statements that are correct or they might provide financial statements that are not correct in terms of what the end users are thinking in terms of the procedures or how it was created was it uh, made in accordance to some standards there could be errors on it so the end users still may not fully trust the financial statements and that's of course where uh, the cpa firm comes in with the audit and the audit then should give some level of assurance that the financial statements which are created and the responsibility of the company are correct in accordance with some agreed upon standards. So that's gonna be the idea. The financial statements are then go to the CPA firm, which then could go to the end users with some more type of verification as to the reliability of the uh, financial statements in some way. Now, of course, there's pros and cons to this type of transaction because that CPA, firm, that trust, that added trust is the benefit that's hopefully gonna say, okay, now we can have more transactions happening because there's more transparency. The end users are more confident in what the company is providing and therefore that's gonna facilitate more transactions. That's huge. We want to have openness and, and transparency in order to have more transactions. Of course, the, the downside of that is that it, it's gonna cost more money in order to do this, in order to have the CPA firm go in. If you're talking about audits of publicly traded companies, that's a lot of money to, to process those audits. So there's a, there's a pro and, and a con of that, but the idea of it is to facilitate the transactions, to provide the trust needed for people to do business, and that's gonna be the concept of the audits. So why would we trust the audit, you might ask? What, you know, what is it about an audit that makes, makes the audit process a more trustworthy process? Well, these, the idea of independence and a, and a third party, an independent third party, is a key component of why we would trust an audit. For example, if we have the company and the end users, they're doing business, they wanna do business, A and B are doing business, C over here is not involved in the immediate transaction between A and B. So if we were, if we were to do business, if you had two people doing business and you had a third party, possibly someone who's a friend of both of you or someone that both of you do not even know, then you might say, hey, this, this person has no uh, relation to the transaction we're doing, therefore their, their opinion is objective and let's rely on their opinion then. And of course, in this case, we're relying on a third party who, who is a professional in one that they should have the, the knowledge in terms of whether something is correct or not. And they should have the standards in this case being a, a CPA regulated by the, by the regulations to act independently. So that's kind of the reason we would trust 
the third party. So independence becomes a huge thing. Now, no, you might be thinking, well, how does the CPA firm get paid by the company? That's <laughs> right. So you're gonna have, you might be thinking, well, there's a kind of a problem. That is a problem. That's why independence becomes so important because you know we need to have some regulations, some standards to regulate the the CPA firm profession in in order to remain independent. So if we had other problems, if if you know the um, people on, that were doing the audit were also part of the board of directors or were part of management of the company, then clearly they would not be be uh, independent. And we'll take a look uh, at a lot more kind of rules in terms of what makes someone independent, what makes someone not independent. And we want to be independent both in appearance and, and in actuality uh, so that we can be someone that both parties can rely on in this transaction. What are assurance services? So categories could include uh, provide reliability or we can have organizing information into certain form or context. We're going to be focusing on the providing of reliability. That's the most common idea of the assurance when we think about the financial statements we're usually uh, having the, the confidence in the financial statements what does it mean to provide reliability so a test services are subset of assurance services so we're going to talk about a test engagements uh, we want to provide assurance as to something's reliability so that's going to be the basic idea from the broad sense we're providing assurance as to something's reliability usually financial statements is what most people think of uh, some kind of review of subject matter that is the responsibility of another is another way to put it so again we usually think about the financial statements the financial statements being a responsibility of the company and the uh, assurance the reliability the reliability the assurance the attestation engagement is to give some type of reliability on those financial statements which are the responsibility of another we could give uh some kind of insurance on, on other stuff like internal controls and other types of things as well what type of subject matter can be reviewed so it could include financial forecasts it could include uh, internal controls which is a huge one these days it could control uh compliance with laws and, and regulations so there's a lot of things that besides the financial statements that we could actually have uh, 